we talked about this book in 2003. And, and That's right. I thought we took care of the whole problem then. <laughs> Most economists predict unemployment will hit above 10% by the end of the year, and in some places the numbers are about above 20%. Detroit has 22% unemployment. Um, and what about this? The number of homeless families is uh, is on the rise. Domestic ab- abuse, crime, gun ownership is on the rise as well. Food banks are reporting dramatic shortages. Um, do you know how many banks have failed this year so far? Well, this year, 53 so far. And that's why you have that sense that I wanted to capture by updating the book. A, that we've learned nothing from the past and that we are repeating the mistakes except on a much larger scale. You know, the the pigs that I refer to in the book are Enron and Welcome and Adelphia, and, and they... They're all played, gone. They're all gone, but they played with billions of shareholder money. And now we have uh, Goldman Sachs and Citigroup and Merrill Lynch and um, all the new uh, culprits uh, playing basically with the trillions of taxpayer wealth. And all that basically would not have been possible were it not for taxpayer uh, bailouts and taxpayer guarantees. You know, even though uh, Goldman Sachs returned the TARP money, they have not returned the money they got through AIG. Remember, that's like a very critical part. You know, we gave AIG $180 billion. Uh, Over $10 billion of that went to Goldman Sachs. That was a counterparty without any negotiation with the government. They just gave them 100 cents to the dollar, which is like unprecedented. And that is really what is so outrageous, that the government gave $4.7 trillion to Wall Street without strings attached. So is this more outrageous than the situation that you wrote about in 2003? Oh, infinitely so. Do you see any parallels? I see many parallels. I see a direct line between um, the accounting gimmicks that brought down uh, Enron, and indeed Arthur Anderson, and um, Adelphi, and a lot of the other companies we mentioned, and the accounting gimmicks that are continuing now, for example. Like, the watering down of mark to market is a central uh, element in the resurgence of what's happening on Wall Street. The problem is that as long as these companies are allowed to continue in their current size, they're going to remain too big to fail, and therefore, they're always going to be protected by government. That's what needs to change. That's the fundamental issue here. You cannot have institutions that are too big to fail because that means that the taxpayer is on the hook. Uh, If they are too big to fail, they are too big to exist. I mean, that's capitalism. And if we want to save capitalism, we cannot create this hybrid form where losses are socialized and gains are privatized. And you basically have uh, uh, Wall Street welfare queens. But what happens if some of these companies do fail. I mean, don't an awful lot of people get hurt. A lot more people than were hurt when Enron failed. And that was, uh, uh, there were an awful lot of people who took a hit, a huge hit. And uh, um, it, it was, and it wound up being a lot more widespread than we could have imagined. But just look how widespread it is right now. You know, the, the states, as well as um, what's happening at the federal government level, but the states are at the moment cutting services to the bone. Uh, the combined deficit of the states is $166 billion. It's important to put that in perspective. We gave AIG $180 billion. So the opportunity cost of what we've done is enormous. And and the cost in, in uh, human lives, in terms of what you've started describing at the beginning of the show, foreclosures, uh, um, f- food banks, uh, homeless shelters being overcrowded, all that is really... Um, part of of the fallout from the meltdown. How much taxpayer money was lost in the corporate corruption of 2003? Well, you know, it wasn't so much taxpayer money there. It was really very much um, shareholder wealth. Mm. And employees. And employees, yes. It was 401ks. It was pension plans. I mean, a lot was affected, but but by comparison, um, it was really a a very small financial meltdown. You know, it's interesting, but I I'm amazed by how little we learn from history. And I was recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, in Pompeii. And uh, and I, as you know, the the entire city was um, um, destroyed by the Vesuvian explosion in 79 AD. 
And there had been so many warning signs beforehand that were ignored, including earthquakes, uh, you know, birds not singing, water not flowing, dogs running away, and they were all ignored. And I have that same sense of foreboding about all the warning signs that we're ignoring today.